Here is the most popular argument why zero factorial is defined as one. Uh, it's given by several YouTubers. So let me look at it quickly and then I will tell you why I don't like it that much. They simply tell you that n factorial is just n times n minus one factorial. And then if we try to preserve the same pattern, if we go down to one factorial, then we must have one factorial equals one times zero factorial. And then from here, one must be one times zero factorial. And then zero factorial should be simply one. Okay, but then why should we necessarily preserve this pattern? Maybe for some consistency, but it's sort of unclear. I like the second popular argument much more because it's much more concrete, but it's still not perfect. So what we want is to define zero factorial. So we can look at the definition of n factorial using permutations. n factorial is simply the number of ways to put n different objects in a row. Here is an example when n is 3 and the objects are a, b, and c, these three letters. And here are listed the six possible so-called permutations or orderings of these objects. So that's why 3 factorial is 6. So having in mind this definition, how should we define zero factorial? And how many ways can we arrange zero different objects in a row? And here the so-called philosophical answer by many other YouTubers is that there is only one way to do that. We can do nothing in only one possible way. But let's put philosophy aside and let's give another better argument which is similar to this one. So instead of looking at permutations, let's look at combinations. So n choose k by definition is given by this expression, n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. So let's see what happens when k equals to n. Then we have to choose n objects out of n objects. We don't care about the order that we choose these objects, but in any case, the answer here is one, right? We can do this in a single way. And when we plug in here in this formula, we get this expression. So after we simplify, we see that this is one over zero factorial and this must be one. So from here directly, we get that zero factorial is one.